Hey guys, this is Harrison with Watch All Outfitters. Today I'm going to be showing you how to tie a fly that I've been tying for about 10 years. Only recently has it gotten a name. Uh, my boss came up with this, not me, so don't make fun. Uh, this is called the Harry's Master Bait. And it is a killer for striped bass, bluefish, albies, bonito, basically uh, any game fish in the New England area. So the hook that I like to use for this is basically just a one aught anything. Um, right now I'm gonna be using a Mustad. Typically I'll use A-Rex uh, for my personal tying, but A-Rex can be a little bit expensive when you do the commercial stuff. So for now we'll stick to the trusty old Mustad. The thread that we're gonna be using is gonna be this Danville uh, monofilament thread. And I like to use this thread because it's clear and we're gonna be tying over uh, a lot of our materials. So it gives us better color through, through the thread. So I'm gonna start out just tying on that thread right to the bend of the hook there. And then I'm gonna just wrap it up just to form a base. We're going to be using four materials on this fly. First one is going to be this white bucktail. The second one is going to be this pearl crystal flash. Then we're going to use a chartreuse bucktail. And then finally an olive bucktail. So we'll start with the white. And I like to grab maybe 40 or so fibers. I don't want it to be too overdressed. I keep these things pretty sparse because they're supposed to be imitating like a sand eel or something along those lines, maybe an anchovy. Um, when you start out with your bucktail, typically they're pretty unorganized. Uh, I like to trim out a lot of those shorter fibers and then I'll go in and I'll actually line up a lot of these longer pieces. You don't want to line them up too much because you still want to maintain a nice taper. But that looks pretty good to me. Maybe pull out a couple more of those. It's a little heavy. I like to do the bucktail about two and a half times the hook shank. So we'll go in and we'll cut that. Always keep a trash can nearby. Bucktail can be pretty messy. We're going to start out just doing a couple of loose wraps right up at the head here, just behind the eye. And then you want to tension down on that until you know you've got them all captured. So I've got that right there. And then what I do is I go with my free hand and I kind of pinch those materials down on top of the hook shank. And then I just wrap them all along the length of the hook shank. So now you got those tied down tightly. Next we're going to come in with our crystal flash. I like to take three pieces of this, it doesn't have to be too flashy, just a little accent piece. And how I do this is I bring it around my thread, like so, and then I'll line up the fibers so that they're all kind of in a row, not completely because you still want to maintain that taper, and then I'll just tie those back all the way to the hook bend, and then come forward. Now we're ready for the chartreuse. Take a little bit less of the chartreuse than you did of the white. It's kind of more of just an accent piece than the whole color of the fly. And now I'll go in and I'll measure that out. Looks about right. I don't need to worry about organizing this little bunch because it was already pretty good. Had a good taper to it. So now I'll just tie that along. And then this one I do a little bit more loosely than I did the white. And so that looks about right. It's a little messy in there, but it doesn't matter too, too much. And then now we're ready for our olive bucktail. This one's really unorganized, so. We're going to definitely take some time and line up some of these fibers. That looks about right. And you want to measure that to the back. You want all of your strands of bucktail to be about at the same spot with a little bit of leeway to create that taper. 
This is the most important bunch of bucktail because this is going to be the one that is on top. This is what you're going to see. So you want to make sure that you've got everything right. So I've got that tied in up front there. And now for this one, I don't like to really yam down on it because it'll end up, especially at the back there, it'll end up flaying up like uh, if you were spinning deer hair. And that's not what we're going for here. So then I'll come forward, do a little bit tighter wrap just to secure all that down. And that's basically the finished fly, um, at least part one anyway. We're going to do a little whip finish, and then we're going to move on to part two of this fly, which is epoxy. There you have it. So for this portion, we are going to take just a little five minute epoxy. I like this uh, Gorilla five minute epoxy. Uh, it works really well, hardens well, hardens clear. And most importantly, it doesn't seem to set quite in five minutes. It gives you about maybe seven minutes, which means you can do more flies per batch of epoxy. So I like it for that reason. So we're gonna start with just a decent little amount here. I like to pull that back so it doesn't get messy. And then I like to use, I think this is like a little cooking stick or like a garden stick. You can use like a popsicle stick or anything like that. And I'll just go in and start mixing this epoxy. So if you've never used five minute epoxy, you just kind of keep stirring it until it eventually gets yellow and then it'll get clear again when it's about ready to use. And I usually will take it and I'll just kind of rub off some of the stuff that isn't getting mixed that's getting on the tool. Get that back into the equation. Try to not get too many bubbles in there because it ends up making your fly look like crap. I assume real fish don't have bubbles in their skin. Well, maybe it looks like scales, I don't know. So that looks about right. So we're gonna take one of our flies and we're just gonna take a healthy little dose there and start moving it along the body here. You wanna take more than you're gonna use for the individual fly. And then I actually put my tool sideways to the fly and that's what I use to kinda distribute it evenly. And then you throw it on your rotator and there you go. So for the last part of this video, we are going to put some eyes on it now that the epoxy, the first round of epoxy is dried and the eyes that I like to use are these hairline dubbin adhesive eyes, 3 16 the silver black. So we're going to take one of those and I like to stick it on just kind of behind the eye of the hook. Doesn't have to be too far. And we'll flip it and put it on this side. Make sure they're fairly even on there. I'll show you guys one more. That's all. All right, now that you got your second batch of epoxy mixed up, we're gonna take just a little bit, maybe a split shot size, and we're going to dab it on top of the eyes first. And then I like to bring it down and just kind of make sure that I'm covering all of those areas around the eye. It's basically an improved surf candy. And I think this kind of bubble around the eye makes it visible 360 degrees, which I think is one of the triggers for this fly. And then you throw it on your rotor, go for your next one. I'll show you one more. And 
and there you go. Now you let those dry, and you've got a pretty damn durable fly. Bluefish won't rip it apart as much. Uh, it's not as durable as some of the synthetics, but I really like the way these naturals move in the water, the natural bucktail. So it's a good fly for me. Hopefully you guys will find the same. Thanks for watching.